Welcome to Bible Logos. I'm Antoinette Adams, your broadcast host. Today I'm excited to bring to you part four of fatherhood, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Please like and share this message on social media with your friends and family. Now let's get to the word. Here is part four of fatherhood, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The Eli was so busy doing being the high priest that he didn't attend to his children and father his children when they were young. And so now they grew up doing everything they were big enough to do and now he's ashamed and embarrassed and he wants to step in and correct them. We're supposed to do that when they're young. So we can't be too important, too busy, work so many hours and so many jobs. Do you realize who I, I don't have, woman that's your job. Say that again. Act like it's her job. She ain't the only one who, who had anything to do with the birth of that child. Right. Right. I had something to do with that birth of the child also. So she's not the only one responsible for raising that child. The same parties that were responsible for the birth of that child are the par parties who are responsible for raising that child. Amen, lights. Amen, carpeting. Amen, cross on the wall. We didn't do all that we should have. We were not there for them. We worked and did not spend time with them. We were so consumed in our own stuff that we did not invest in them. And so when they come of age and begin to act out, we don't know what to do. Fathers, we cannot allow ourselves to be too busy or too important to father our children. So let me go to 1 Samuel chapter 2 and look at what happened in this case. It says in verse 12, now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. Now, how is it that you're the high priest and your kids don't know the Lord? So many of us, we so busy getting everybody else saved, our own household is going to hell. He says in verse 22, Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So he said to them, why do you such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. Look at verse 25. Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father. It was too late then. Because the, but look what it says here. Because the Lord desired to kill them. Lift your hand and say, Lord, don't get that tired of me. We don't want to let God to get so tired of us that he said, just let him die and kill him. Amen? Lord, don't get that tired of me. Let me look at the ugly. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let me look at the ugly. The illustration for the ugly is somebody you're going to be surprised I'm using, and that's David. David loved God. We know David loved God, don't we? We know David, David was known as the man after God's own heart. David was passionate for God. I don't believe you can find anybody in the Bible who loved God more than David did. And yet, as much as he loved God, he was not a good father. David was a mighty warrior for God. David defeated Goliath with a slingshot and a stone. David conquered kings and kingdoms and nations all around him and quieted all his enemies. David was probably the most famous king of all, certainly in the Bible, but probably of all time. But while David was out there being the greatest head of state that you can find, and while he was out there womanizing and killing Uriah to steal Uriah's wife, David's own household was in shambles. Sometimes we as fathers let our children get away with murder because of guilt. Because of condemnation. 
We didn't do all we should have. We might not have set the best example for them. We were not there for them. We did not set the best example for them. So we feel guilty. And as a result of that, we allowed them to get away with murder and do everything that we do. And we act like we don't see it or don't know anything about it. But I want to speak to the fathers today and say this. We cannot allow guilt or condemnation to prohibit us from fathering our children. I might have made mistakes. I might have done things that I shouldn't have done, but I still have to father this child. I still got to teach him the right way. I might not have set the best examples for him based upon my life, but I've got to turn myself around and recognize that that child's future is in my hands. That child is looking at me. That child is modeling me, and I have a responsibility. So David was a great king, but a horrible father. David's oldest son, Amnon, was lusting after his sister, David's daughter. So now they had different mama, mama from a different, how they say it? A sister from a different mama. Huh? Is that how we say it? Well, this was the sister, though, because Tamar was his sister. So a sister from another mother. So David was her father, but her mother was different from some, some of the other siblings' his mother, <laughs> including Amnon. So Amnon was lusting after his sister Tamar, and he wanted her, and he made himself sick because he had to have her. So the next thing that we know he decides, I'm, I'm the king's son, and I get what I want anyway. So he rapes his own sister. Now, she had another brother who had the same mother, whose name was Absalom. So Absalom, after David, or after Amnon had raped his sister, Absalom was mad. But he waited to see what David was going to do about it. And so he waited for years. And David didn't even, didn't respond at all, didn't say anything. And so over the period of time, all of this bitterness is rising up in Absalom, because now he's upset not only with his brother for raping his sister, because see, that cost her a lot. She was a princess. And back then as a princess, your virginity, your worth was your virginity. Your future was your virginity. See, y'all can go out and work today for yourself, but they didn't couldn't go out. There wasn't nowhere for her to go work. So she was relying upon her status. And part of her status was her virginity. Her brother took it from her. Welcome back. You don't want to miss the conclusion tomorrow of this message, fatherhood, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Please don't forget to like and share this message with your friends and family. I'm Antoinette Adams, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.